Hey, Knowledge Family. How is everybody doing today? I hope everybody is well today. Family, let's talk about Khadija May Brown. She is 28 years old, and that's her husband, Jeremy Brown. Let's talk about how Khadija went on Facebook and she wanted to tell everybody live on Facebook how her husband don't do any cooking, he don't do any cleaning, he's gone, he's working most of the time, and he's just not doing what she wants him to do around the house. Okay, so look at this loving picture, family. Looks like they really love each other. And we're going to get into this real deep about Khadija May Brown, 28 years old, deleted her husband right here on the screen on Facebook Live because he didn't cook for the kids and not doing household chores and everything like that okay but anyway family uh before we get into that i'm going to show y'all the not all of the video a little piece of it you know and uh, a little audio of what she was saying when this incident happened and y'all already know me the knowledge family y'all already know i'm gonna get deep on her i'm gonna be on her heart and that's one thing about us over here on the knowledge family we just don't only talk about men. We don't only talk about women. Whoever needs that smoke at the time, that is who we give it to. Yes, we do. But anyway, she was on that Facebook Live running her mouth. And I want y'all to check it out. And um, just the audio. You know, um, I'm going to show some of the video, but not all of it, like I said, okay? And then I want to... I'm going to let y'all listen to it, but then I want to listen to it again because I want to really piece and stop it and tell y'all what is on in J mind about this right here. She now has a, this happened down there in Mississippi, Columbus, Mississippi. She now has a bond of $750,000 um, to get out. But we'll go over Mississippi because, see, Mississippi is down here on the Gulf Coast where I am. And um, it's going to be hard for her to get out of this one. I don't care what she say. Anyway, check out these pictures, family. Because if you look at them, they look very loving. That's her right there. And once again, family, let me say this right quick before I forget. Uh, thank y'all for the 1K that y'all have subscribed and got our channel to 1K. Thank you so much. After this video, the next video I do is going to be a celebration video. Y'all will get to see some of the team. Um, we're going to have a big discussion about trending topics that's out. We're going to be celebrating. We're going to be talking. It's going to be real nice. We're celebrating you guys, Cafe of Not, all our subscribers. It's going to be real nice. So I just hope y'all join us for that in the next video. And they are working on us do, me doing the live videos and all that stuff. So y'all just hang in there. Bear with me. Thank you for all your support. Please check out that next video. It's a celebration for you guys and for the channel. For you guys helping Cafe of Knowledge get to 1K. Okay. Okay, anyway, back to this girl here that got her mouth wide open with a tongue ring and all that stuff right there. See, I'm, anyway, we'll get to that. But anyway, this is her, okay? And if you look, you know, they have some pretty loving pictures here. Now, I ain't too much digging. They both up there because they look like gang signs to me. I'm not for sure, you know what I'm saying? But it don't look good with those little signs and stuff they doing up there. But anyway, that's them. And you can see that they look like they're a loving couple. Okay? So let's check out what was being said during this video. And in this Facebook Live that she was doing, family, her mother was also there. 
at their house, okay? The mother have her own place, but the mother was over there this morning, this particular morning. And so, in this Facebook Live, you it'll be him, his wife, and the wife's mother, okay? So, let's check that out. Because NJ is going to give them to a raw and rugged. Y'all already know how I do. I'm sorry. I don't care who don't like it. But this is um, the video family. Check it out. It's, it's not going to be all of it, but check it out. Okay, now remember, I'm going to let y'all hear it out. Then I'm going to play it back on audio. And I'm going to let y'all listen as I start reading this joker here. Okay? Now check it out. This is her complaining about what he don't do. And you can hear the mother in the background. You know what, family? I, I know I told y'all I was going to let y'all listen to it all the way through. I'm going to let y'all listen to it all the way through. But first of all, why is the mother talking? She already got me wanting to get a goodie powder. Why is she in the background talking, first of all? You know what? I ain't even going to get heated. I'm going to let y'all listen to it, family. And I'm going to dissect this whole thing. I'm going to play it again. And I'm going to have to get him peace of my mind. Here it is. Okay, now it went out there because um, that's when the pow pow hit. Okay, um, so I'm gonna let y'all listen to it in audio. From the beginning, y'all heard of just about what was going on there. So I'm going to let y'all hear the audio of this and her mother and them talking. So we're going to go back to that again and listen to the audio. This is their wedding picture that they took. Now check out this audio. And I want y'all to listen to it because now I have to stop and say some things because I'm doing the audio due to the fact that they have that pow pow in there. But I stopped it just as that was finna come in. So check out this. Okay. So. Okay, so she's saying everybody want to have something to say, but he not here with his kids. Okay. Well, people want to have something to say, but he ain't here with his kids. He ain't helping. Uh, he left 
left went at six o he left at six o six to go be with his mama. Okay, right there, right there, family, right there. First of all, why is the wife on Facebook Live at 7.36, she say, in the morning, telling the people on Facebook that her husband don't cook, he don't clean, and he's not taking care of the house duties there at the house. So why is she on Facebook Live telling these people that? When all she got to do is put down the phone and get her butt in there, slide herself in there with them raggedy flip-flops she got on, and go in there and crank up that stove and start cooking. Why is her mother there anyway? See, that's what I'm talking about. You know, it's some mother-in-laws that really do need to stay out of their kids' marriage. You see what I'm saying? Because why is her mother running over there? At 7 o'clock in the morning. Because you can hear her mother say. I came over here to cook. And uh, stuff for the kids. Why is you over there anyway? At 7 a.m. in the morning. To cook for the grandkids. Did her daughter call her over there? For a cover up in the alibi? That's what I feel. That's what I feel. Because see. The thing is. Is when she said. I came over here. And I, I had to come over here and I had to cook breakfast and stuff for his kids. He he could have did this for his own kids. My thing is, okay, so did the daughter call him? Because, see, I have a daughter-in-law myself. And I know a lot of y'all might have uh, a daughter-in-law or a son-in-law or whatever. But the thing is that if my son called me and say, hey, um, she not cooking or whatever. Can you come over here? And watch the kids for us or cook for the kids. I'm going to say, uh-uh, I ain't coming over there to cook nothing for the kids. What you can do is bring my grandkids over here and I cook for them over here. I don't need to be going over there cooking and, and cleaning and all that stuff. Y'all house. Because y'all ain't coming over here and cooking and cleaning in mine. Okay? So, first of all, when th this is just me, family. As soon as my son or daughter would have called me and said, hey... Uh, could you come over here? Because uh, uh, he ain't doing right. He ain't doing right. She ain't doing right. I, I need to cook and I got to do this and I got to do that. Can you come over here and cook for her? First of all, E&J ain't going over there and cooking for nobody. You know why? Because that's all you had to say at top is that cooking and cleaning and all that. Uh-uh. You already done canceled me out. I'm not doing no cooking and cleaning over nobody else's house. You do it. What you can do is bring them over here. You can bring them and they school clothes and all that. I cook breakfast for them or I take them somewhere to get breakfast and then they get their clothes on and everything and I will take them to school. But far as you trapping me, talking about come over here and cook and clean and you telling me what all that person did, that's a clear sign that you want me to cook and clean. So, nah, uh I ain't doing that. So, that's why I say, why is the mother over there? She said she came over there from her house. So why didn't she tell them to bring, or her daughter, to bring the kids over to her house? And she'll take them to school or send them to school, and she will cook the breakfast for them. She ain't had no business over there. Point blank, period. And did she call her mother over there for an alibi? Because, see, I feel like she called her mother over there. Because she knew she was going to crank up some mess with this man. She knew that she was most likely getting ready to delete that man. So she called the mother over there so the mother could be an alibi. So she called her. I, I, you know, I really do need you to come over here and help me. I'm just overloaded, mama. I'm just overloaded. Now, see, this is what I think happened, family. Cause it shows it all over this whole situation. She called her mother. I, I'm just I'm just so overloaded, mama. Could you just come over here and just help me? I mean, at least cook. I'll get them ready for school. But, you know, he, you know, Jim ain't got here. And, or Jim is upstairs. Or Jim is doing something. He ain't helping me. Nah, nah, nah. So she did all that to try to draw her mother over there because she knew as long as her mother was there, she could have an alibi for whatever she does to this man because she had most likely made up her mind that he was going to go that day. Yeah, uh-huh, Khadija, you ain't slick, sister. You ain't slick. That's what I think. She brought her mother over there for an alibi and to cover up whatever was going to happen. But see, the thing is, 
is when this happened and that pow pow happened, it was on live. I think if it wasn't online, her mother would have helped her cover up this whole thing. They would have had this whole story a whole nother way. Oh, he was jumping on her. He was kicking on her. He was doing this. He was dragging her by her hair. So she had no choice but to do it. I think that's how it was supposed to go. Because it's quite strange that she had enough sense to put that camera down. A lot of people said he knocked the camera out of her hand. No, he didn't. She laid that camera down. That camera did not fumble or do 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 nothing none of that when it was down. It was put down easily. So she knew what she was doing. She didn't want the Facebook viewers to see what she was up to and what she was doing. That's what that was. But anyway, let's go ahead on and finish. Cause they done got me heated over here. You 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 got the cheetah, the mama. The mom broke down mama cheetah. And then you got the baby cheetah, which is uh, the daughter. They both of them old broke down cheetahs running around in the wood in the apartment complex and stuff. But see, that young cheetah done got locked up down there in the jail in a cage where she belonged with boat locks on it. Check it out. Everybody loyalty. But where's his loyalty? I ain't saying no damn loyalty. I'm trying to... But he want to talk about me when I am not doing it. Now, listen at the mama talking about, I ain't studying no damn Lord. See, that, 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 that's what I'm talking about. She, she was instigating this whole thing. Why is the mother instigating and talking like she is that man's wife, too? She acting like, she acting like that's her husband, too. Like, both of them sharing the same man. That's how she acting. That's what it's giving. Why are you over there, ma'am? Talking about you ain't that no loyalty. Where your man at? That, what? That's what I want to know. Look here, uh, mama lady. Where your man at? Why you got so much time that you got to be over there? That's what I want to know. See, she most likely don't have no man. So she over there throwing garbage over there in their marriage. She throwing negativity over there in their marriage. That don't make no sense. That really don't. Ladies, we gots to do better. And then she was over there with a red scully cap on. Oh, we're going to talk about that. Talk about me when I'm not doing. talk about Okay, now y'all hear how that mama over there cackling like a little hen. Gang, 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 gang. Hey, man, gang. Well, he still can do this. Well, he still can do that. See, that's what I'm talking about. See, she ain't got no man, most likely. See, that's why she got all this time to go over there and throw some stink in the game over there in their marriage. Because, see, don't nobody want her ass. So, she got to run over there and disrupt her daughter's marriage. See, that's what I'm talking about, by lonely ass women. See, what she should have been is she could get up at 6, six 7 o'clock in the morning and run over there to her daughter's house. She should have went over there to the bingo hall and then sat down there and did a little bingo game if she that bored. Instead of going over there instigating mess. Lord, you could tell how this girl upbringing was. Terrible. I ain't got nothing to do with no loyalty. I ain't got nothing to do with no loyalty. No, you ain't got nothing to do with no loyalty because you ain't got nobody to be loyal to. And you ain't got nobody who want to be loyal to you. So therefore, don't nobody want you down there in Mississippi, obviously, because you got too much time on your hands to run over there disrupting their marriage. Anyway, let's go on with this here, right? Oh, this, this lady here pissing me off. I'm going to talk about that ugly ass scully cap she had on, too. Who do that? Who are grandmamas wear that on over the stove? Anyway. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay, hold on, family. Hold on, because she done got me heated around here. Hey. <laughs> Family, y'all, 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 please bear with me. There you go. Well, people, I'm 
you gonna wanna have something to say, but he ain't here with his kids, he ain't helping. Uh, he left what, at six o he left at six oh six to go be with his mama. That's the part I wanted to go back to, family. And she said he left at 6.06 to go be with his mother. So all this is going on in the morning, family. So he left at 6.06 to be with his mother. At this time, she's talking. She said it was 7.36. Over an hour. Why didn't she already have that food cooked for them kids? And them kids should have been on already eight. And then they was on their way to the bus stop if they had to go to school or wherever they was headed out to that day. See, that shows right there that for some reason when he goes see his mother, it's a problem. But there is her mother there in the house who is the problem. Ladies, we got to really work on ourselves when it comes to our children, marriages and relationships and stuff. Because it's sometimes we just need to sit down. And if we can't help them improve the marriage, we damn sure don't need to be going in there, disrupting the marriage and throwing salt in the, in the marriage to where something drastically can happen, like what happened to this young man right here. Because the older ones don't have no man so they want to pretend like the daughter, husband, is they man. Come on now. Do, do I need to cook for the kids? Listen at the stinking ass mama. He don't, he don't never have to question. He don't want to question everybody's loyalty. But where is his loyalty at? I ain't putting no damn loyalty. I'm to... But he want to talk about me when I am not doing. He want to talk about me when I'm not doing. Now pay attention, family. She said he talking about calling the police. So it's most likely been a lot of DV. Uh, that's domestic violence. I just don't want to say it so much, but evidently he is used to calling the police on her. And if you notice, she said out her own mouth, he talking about calling the police. So that means he is the one that probably normally calls the police on her. Because he's quick to say it. So that lets us know that right there. You know, he talking about calling the police. Yeah, because see, and she said it like that because she know he will. Okay, you, you can hear him walking in now, family. so sad about a man getting his stuff getting ready to go to work he is going to work to provide right so she said look at him getting his stuff ready to go to work see that shows right there that this girl here is all the way backwards and it most likely come from the backward ass grandmama that's over there with her that's her mother but the kid's grandmother you know so she's backwards all together and most likely it comes from the backwards mother because there's no way any woman should feel like a man getting his things to get ready to go to work. That is something wrong with that. 
Wow. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Okay, now the mother is asking Jeremy, what is the conversation you want to have? Jeremy, what is the conversation you want to have? First of all, Jeremy ain't got to have no conversation with you. He is not married to you. Why is you sitting up, mama? Why is you asking this man what kind of conversation he wants to have? What? You're not married to him. Your daughter is. So if you notice when the mother say, what kind of conversation you want to have? Then the daughter say, yeah, what kind of conversation you want to have? See, the mother is baiting the daughter up as well. He don't have to have a conversation with her broke down self. He really don't. And she in the kitchen family. Y'all didn't catch it probably on the video, but she in the kitchen over a frying pan with a red scully cap on. Why she cooking anyway? We gots to do better. Why is a grandmother over the stove in a red scully cap anyway? First of all, when you come in somebody's house, you're supposed to take your hat off, especially a woman. So I wouldn't want none of that food anyway. If my grandmama over the stove cooking with a red scully cap on looking like a broke down old rapper. I, I don't want it because it looked like she rushing anyway. That food is bound to be burned. Because why is you got on a skelly hat? Is you ready to take up out of here? I don't want nothing that she got. Because if you didn't have the decency to take off that hat or before you came over there, brush your hair to the back, groom yourself. If you didn't have enough decency to do a little type of hygiene with your hair, I know you didn't do it with your ass. So I don't want none of your food if I was one of them grandkids. No, that's okay. I think they serving breakfast at the school this morning. So, Mama, I'm just going to eat at the school. I don't want nothing uh, Grandmama cooked today. No, she not looking too right with that red scully cap on. That's what I would have said. Yes. So why is she even over there? Anyway. Anyway, family, let's get back on here to this tramp. Okay, now, this man has asked his mother a lot of times, tell your daughter to keep her hands off me. Now, the daughter want to come back and say, oh, you the one that slapped me, slapped me now, whatever, whatever. I don't know if the man slapped her or not, but he sure didn't slap her that day, you know. And so she was trying to spark up an alibi then. See, she knew what she was finna do. So she was trying to let the public know he slapped me. Probably before. Because he damn sure did. I didn't hear no type of evidence that he slapped her that day. He didn't. That man was trying to leave. That's all he And he kept telling the mother, please tell your daughter to keep her hands off of me. And the mother still ain't too much saying anything. So I think they planned this. If not the mother, the daughter. The daughter drugged the mother into it. She really did. She really did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, now she is grabbing on this man. Then the mother says, stop, stop. Telling her daughter, just stop, just stop. She's not really trying to intervene in it. She just, you know, she just going to watch her daughter whip this man. But basically, you know, her daughter is bad. She talking like she bad in the background. They going to kind of bully this man and show him he going to obey what the both of them are saying. 
That's basically what this is. It's 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 terrible. Okay. <laughs> He's saying, keep your hands off. What's the Now y'all heard that tramp. That tramp mama said, don't be putting me in those situations that I don't need to be in. First of all, you put yourself in a situation when you ran over to their house talking about you finna cook some bacon and shit and all that. You put yourself in that conversation in they matter, in they marriage. See, I hate when people tell trifling lies. Y'all ain't going to be putting me in the middle of it. No, you put yourself in the middle of it because you ran over there instead of telling your daughter to bring the kids over to your house. That's what you should have did. That's what grandmothers are for. You tell them to come over to your house and you will do all that yourself. But no, you ran over there to get in the middle of their stuff because you think Jeremy is your husband too because you ain't got one. And you know, I think Mississippi... Columbus, Mississippi, have a pretty good population of men. But quite strange, none of them want mama. And you see exactly why. Because she cackling like a hen. Don't no man won't be bothered with all that cackling every day. Okay, now, you heard the mother say, ain't nobody finna come over here and do nothing. First of all, family, Jeremy had just said, he's on the phone talking to one of his relatives because he wants them to come and at least pick him up because his wife said, you ain't taking no cars. Them cars in my now, they belong to me too. She's she just snatching everything away from him so he can't get out the door, so he can't go to work. So he's asking his people, hey, you might want to send one of his other girl cousins over there because he can't. He don't want to hit her, but he's saying, hey, I get one of my cousin girls over here and see if they can handle it. That's when her mother, you heard her mother say, ain't nobody coming over here to do nothing to nobody. Okay, you gonna say he can't call nobody over there to come handle your daughter, but you and your daughter is handling him in there until he gets deleted. Come on now. How trifling. How trifling. <laughs> Okay, family, I don't know if y'all heard that, but she's putting her hands on this man. And she pulls out that pistol, a 9 millimeter. okay? And she sat there and said, I don't know if y'all caught it, go back and rewind it, because I don't want to rewind it. I done already did enough for that, and I ain't trying to waste y'all time. But when she pulled it out, you can hear her specifically say, clap her hands. Murder scene, murder scene, murder scene, murder scene. It's going to be a murder scene day. Come on now. Come on now. She said that. That's premeditated. Premeditated when you say that. That's what she said. She said that at that moment when she grabbed him by his shirt or whatever and trying to tussle with him. She pulls out that nine and then that's what she says as she claps her hand. Letting him know he's finna go and it's finna be an order scene in that house. So that's premeditated. Check it out. See, he's out for the call the police.
You heard her? She said, I will delete your ass, bitch. And she says, stop, stop. And she's saying stop, not because he's putting his hands on her family. She's saying stop because he's trying to walk out the door. So she's telling him he better stop right now. Like, you better not go out that door. And she said, I delete you, bitch. But he kept on walking to go out the door. And that's when you're going to hear the pow pow. Okay, family. So that's when it went off. Okay. And it hit him. And now she's doing all that um, hooping and hollering her and her mother or whatever. And I'm going to let y'all listen to more of the audio because a lot of people have not seen the video and a lot of the video been taken down now, but I don't know if everybody heard the full audio. I'm going to let y'all hear the full audio because it's sad. Um, you know, if you don't have a strong stomach, viewer discretion is advised, basically, um, to hear the rest of it. Um, but you could just listen to what is going on here. And it's very heartbroken. Y'all can tell how my voice just dropped. But this is the rest of it, family. So now the mother has ran outside pleading for help. Um, like I said, her mother most likely missed out on being married. So she's going to make herself be married to the daughter husband too. That's what it's given. You know, um, You'll hear the mother, she's outside screaming, hollering, and all that, you know. But before that, she was inside the house flapping her raggedy gums, talking about what he ain't doing, what he need to do, what he should do, and all that stuff, you know. So, um, here you go, family. It's just touching. It's just touching. child crying for her daddy so this woman did this with that child right there in that room there were some more kids upstairs but that one there was right there and saw that happen to her father saw her mother do that to her father so now she's crying out for her father because she knows what just happened and she that little girl knows that something is gone that her father's basically gone. Can you imagine? Can you imagine, family? But listen...
okay, so now um, the mother of this young lady has ran outside talking about She's calling on Jesus now. Jesus, help me, please. Jesus, help us, please. Jesus, you put too much on me. Jesus, you just put too much on me. You just put too much for me. But the bad Jesus. Oh, Lord, please help us. Please help us, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Now, this is what the mother is outside screaming and hollering. But see, she should have been calling on D Jesus when she was in that house bumping her raggedy gums about what this man wasn't doing. She should have been talking to both of them about Jesus and God and the high power and all that stuff. She should have sat down. Hey, y'all, let's sit down. Let's talk. All this violence is not necessary. Let's, 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 let's see what we could do or let's see what that. That's what parents are supposed to do. Not go over there and instigate the thing and provoke this to happen. You know, and I feel like in-laws not even supposed to be in their kids' marriages. They can tell them, hey, why don't you suggest some things like, why don't y'all go to counseling? I would like for y'all to go to counseling and things like that. And they talk to their son or daughter separately and tell them, if you're not happy, baby, you might need to move on without all this negativity and grabbing on each other and fighting each other and things like that because I don't want to see either one of you get hurt. So I'd rather for you to walk away permanently, get a divorce and all that before I want to see y'all going through a DV relationship, you know, and talk to them about counseling and the higher power and all that. Don't wait till you strike up the mess and get someone deleted in the mess then start calling on Jesus I told you these folks were backwards from the beginning I told y'all they was yeah uh huh Jesus okay so and then this girl here had the nerve to say while her husband is laying down there basically gone um, she gonna say, God, if you real, wake him up. Huh? Mm -hmm. said Jesus take the wheel and stay with him and at one point the little girl says family my daddy my daddy my daddy and she stops crying instantly well so called crying talking about the wife now she was oh I didn't mean it I don't want to go to jail that's the first thing she said I don't want to go to jail well sister y'all already down there but anyway uh, when the Little child was saying, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. She, the the wife, was playing. That's why I said she was playing like she was crying. Because when the little girl was kept hollering, Daddy, 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 she stops crying and tell the girl, Yo, Daddy, Dad. And then start back weeping. <laughs> Come on now. She stopped instantly just to look at that child and say, Yo, Daddy, Dad. And then she started back weeping. Come on now. It, she did a great performance on this. A great performance. Because she was not sincerely sorry. Not to me. Okay, so now the police is coming in the room and listen to this.
Now I want y'all to check out something with the shafts in. Now I have to give the sheriff department their props. Because they came in there and their main focus was on the kids that was remained in the house, which it should be. And he said, this is the sheriff department. Are y'all here? It'll be okay. They just want to comfort him. And they took him out the back door instead of the front, okay? Because that's where their father was laying at. So, at this time, she has already put down, she put down the phone. She was still on Facebook Live, but she put down the phone when she knew she was about to pow pow her husband. That's when she started trying to say, hit me. You slap me. You slap me. Uh, slap me now. See, she was starting her alibi. So when, you know, it's time for her to go to court, that's what she could say. Use that uh, self-defense type thing, okay? So listen to the sheriff get the kids out of the house. But I really want y'all to listen to what one of these sheriffs said. And we're going to talk about it. Okay, this is the one where I want y'all to listen to what the sheriff said she told him. Listen. Okay, he said, she said, they, the one of the sheriffs said, well, did she say what happened? He said, yeah, she said they was in here fighting and the gun went off. Y'all see how that trout mouth dumps the trash lie? That man was not fighting her. He was not fighting her. He was trying to leave. He even said he was going to call the police. He even asked his mo her mother Tell, please tell your daughter to keep her hands off me. He was saying everything he needed to say to avoid confrontation. And she sat right up there and told them sheriffs that they was first arguing. Then they started fighting and the gun went off. How trifling. How trifling. You know, that's sad. That's sad. It really is. And that mother, she ran out the door like an old broke down chihuahua with a scully cap on, hollering for Jesus and the Lord. And like y'all heard, it was a nine millimeter that she struck him with. And she gonna say, say she didn't know it was... Uh, bullet in the chamber. She said, I didn't know that it was no bullet in the chamber. I didn't know that it was no clips in the chamber. First of all, when you pick up a gun, a gun is not known to be empty. First of all, a gun is sitting with something in it at all times for protection of the house. See, you put it on safety, but what you don't do is have it empty because you never know when intruders going to come and all that stuff right there. You can just kick it off safety and do what you got to do. But you most likely know it's something in there. It's one or two bullets in there. You know what I'm saying? So I don't buy that story either. I didn't know it was, I didn't know it was no person. And then she said this family, I didn't know it was a bullet in the chamber. That was what she said. I didn't know, I mean, I knew it wasn't loaded, she talking about the clip, but she said, I didn't know it was one in the chamber. Well, family, when an incident like that happens, see, y'all know how we do over here on Knowledge Family. I pay attention to everything, what people say, and I go by the evidence. But who first start off by saying, I didn't know it was a bullet in the chamber? See, people normally don't go through that. They'll just say, I ain't know it was no bullets in there. I, I ain't. 
I ain't know it was no bullets in there. I didn't know that it was loaded. That's your first instinct to say. But when you're trying to cover up, you tend to say some things that, why did you say it like that? It was, I didn't know it was a bullet in the chamber. How many people say that, family, when the incident happened? They just say, I ain't know the bullet was loaded. I ain't know it. I ain't know it had no bullet in there. They said it like that. She specifically started talking about the chambers and all that. See, when people go into deep little details that's unnecessary, you wonder why they telling so many unnecessary details. Like, why are you detailing this story so precisely? Most likely something is wrong. Mm -hmm. Most likely that person lying like hell. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um... Let me show y'all this because you see, I was showing y'all different pictures of how this couple here was always on social media showing how much of a loving and great relationship they got. That it's it's fine and dandy that they are a beautiful loving couple couple. When they are on their social media, they got all kind of pictures up. You know? Showing how loving they are, how how beautiful the relationship is, and all this. But see, sometimes, not all the time, but some most like most of the time, the ones who are posting so much on social media, the couple that's posting the mu the most all the time. Understand what I'm finna say, family. Old school T here. When you see people that's always posting their relationship, just posting it every other day, every other day, every day, or, you know, they do it a lot, you know, to prove to people how beautiful their relationship is and to prove to people how much in love they are. Those are most likely the ones who are going through the most hell and the ones who are the most unhappy. Mm hmm It is. It is. It is. See, when people do all this right here and they constantly put stuff like this on Facebook and stuff like that, they really lying to themselves and they trying to convince themselves as they're trying to convince their social media friends. They're trying to convince themselves that we in a loving relationship and they trying to get other people to believe that story as well. Yeah. See, people who do this a lot. So that was him. And that's when I was showing y'all family. This is the girl's mother over here. If y'all can see it. This is her. This is her right here. In that red scully cap. Broke down red scully cap on. Sitting up there looking like a broke down rapper. Yes, she is. That was him on the phone trying to talk to his relatives and say somebody might need to come get me because uh, she done took the car keys, she done did, she don't want me to go, she won't let me go, it won't none of that, and her mother over here cackling like a hen too, running her damn mouth and bumping her raggedy gum. Somebody please come over here and get me. That's what he was doing on that phone. But it was too late. But that's that mama raggedy ass over there in that corner. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So right here, it sparked outrage, family. Um, this whole story did, and it's down in Mississippi. And it, and it really did. And with several social media users condemning the woman and asking law enforcement officers to provide her with significant legal punishment over the deletion. Okay? So, um... That's it did spark a lot of outrage. That's her when they arrested her. And she needed that mug shot. She really did. Y'all just check out that right there. But they did put her down there. And I'm gonna tell you, Mississippi is the worst place to uh and you will see this is what she told the people. Okay, family. She told the sheriff, and this is what the sheriff said at about 7.30 on Sunday at Green Tree Apartments. Law enforcement officers reportedly responded to the DV call at that apartment, okay, at the scene. And they discovered Jeremy gone from a single, you know, wound. Uh, officials later identified the victim as 28-year-old Jeremy Brown. 
and confirmed that he was the suspect's husband and lived in the same residence. Okay, and it was that nine millimeter, okay? Then it says, Sheriff said that Khadija and Jeremy were involved in a verbal argument that eventually turned physical in nature. No, it didn't. She did it. But see, she was telling the sheriff, because that's why I let y'all hear that audio, is because she, the shed, one of the sheriffs asked the other one, hey, did she say what happened? He said, yeah. She said they was arguing, and then they started fighting, and the gun went off. No, they weren't fighting. She was doing it. And she was trying to stop him from leaving that house. Point blank, period. And then it says uh, the woman allegedly streamed the last part of the argument on Facebook and only the audio of the pow pow went live on social media. And that's what I let y'all hear the audio because that was the only thing left of this whole situation. How trifling. How trifling. And she is 28 years old down there in Mississippi. And she, you know, she was charged. And she said her husband was arguing. And it stemmed on Facebook. And Brown reportedly, you know, Papa Jeremy, why he was trying to leave their apartment in an attempt. And that's true. Now, that part is true. Why he was trying to leave. Because she was saying, stop. Like, you better not make one more step towards that door. Stop, stop. And he wouldn't stop. He wanted to go. You know? Especially after she had to pull the gun out. Now, I wanted to show y'all this. Because this shows right here that he seems like he was okay. And he was trying to make things work. And he was bragging on her on his social media. And then we're going to take a look at hers and see how dark hers was. And the signs that, man, he should have, he, you know, you, I'm, I'm not blaming him, but it's a lot of signs on social media that he was supposed to been kick rocks. You know, and I know he didn't because of those kids. But he lost his life trying to sacrifice his life for the kids. Because that's the only reason why I feel that man stayed there. He really did. He loved those kids. So you see, Jeremy, hit one of his posts, I enjoy being the father of four and having a great, beautiful wife. Okay. These are things that he was putting on his social media. I always express how I feel about my family. Family means bond. And if you ain't got that, you don't have anything. So you can tell how he felt for his family. You know? You really can. I'm just showing y'all how he felt about her. But then we gonna see how she was posting about him. Because he was posting like trying to make it look like it's good. And it says, I just want to say, I know people like to judge about me and my wife relationship about us being so perfect. We are not perfect. We are humans just like everybody else. Yes, I have four children with my wife. Now, not by multiple women. Just wanted to let that be known. Just because people like to run and talk. So, he basically is saying that I know people think that we have a perfect life. And it seems like he has been provided. Because he's saying right there that people look at them kind of in a jealousy way. Like, man, you know, they got this, they got that or whatever. And people might say that they think they better than other people. But really, they don't. That's what he's saying. We don't feel like we better than everybody. We just have a little bit more. You see what I'm saying? And that's basically what he was saying. And he was saying, I don't have kids by multiple women. I have it by just one woman. Khadija, huh? And like, he's proud of it. Okay. Then you will see, he made a post said, I need somebody to find me some baby formula powder. I look all around Columbus, need two containers. I will send through Cash App. So you can see right there that they was running out of baby formula and it has been a shortage of baby formula. But you can see he made a post reaching out to everybody. Like, hey. If y'all can find this certain kind of whatever, please hit me up. 
I will hit you on your cash app. Probably pay you a little extra just for helping him out. But you can see that he was a family man and he was doing what he could do. Was he cheating on her? That I can't say. But you can say that from his post, you can see that he was really the one that going above and beyond for her. Okay, so then you'll see he did a happy birthday post for her. You know, please help me say happy birthday to my lovely wife. You know, come on now. This is what he wrote for her. Okay, and then he got right here. Uh, when I'm in a relationship, nobody looks better to me than the person I'm with. I don't care how attractive someone is. My baby is more attractive. So you see how he um he really is um saying a lot. He really is saying a lot. And you see that's their marriage certificate. He posted that on social media. He's proud of it. He's proud of being with her. You know? And it says, love your family each and every day, no matter what differences that you have with them. So he was going through something with her, but he was still saying, no matter what happens, I'm still going to love my family and y'all need to do the same. But it comes a time, people, where you have to know when to let go and you have to know when it's too toxic for you. You know? Check this out. He posted that with him and her. I just want y'all to see how he was feeling about his wife. How much he was trying to stay there. Make it work. Love her. Stay in the household with the children the way we as women always ask the men to do. Just stay in the household with us and help raise your children. That man was doing that and look what he got. See, that's why I say we need to talk to our sons and daughters. Because this is unreal. That's another one. When you care for some, when you care for some you think will get better. I don't know. That ain't my reading. That's Jeremy writing. But anyway... It won't, it's only get worse. I don't, Jeremy, now, you letting English kick your ass, because it damn sure ain't kicking mine. Because I'm reading it like, I'm not finna read that, because it, uh, it, it, it ain't looking, it ain't looking right. He ain't finna make me feel dumb over here. But anyway, that's another post he did. Okay? And then, you can see where he posts again on one of her birthdays. Right here. Happy birthday to my beautiful wife. You know? Yeah. And why she got so many different looks to her? See, that's what I'm saying, people. Stop using these filters. Because these filters have you looking dog, dog, dog one day and light the next day. And people don't even know what you're doing. You know? And that's him posting a picture. You know? That's him. My beautiful wife. That's what he put. So he was really showing how much he loved her. You know? So he was doing all his posting. That's him posting his wife again. You can see he was very happy. Very happy. That's him posting again. Enjoying my night with my beautiful wife, Khadija May Brown. Okay? So, he was doing all this. You know? And that's her names, too. She go by May, and then she go by that. She go by May May as a nickname. Oh, y'all already know I had to dig into all that stuff right there. Now, this is her. This is what she putting up there about Jeremy. She said, I have a by, you know, a by husband, Jeremy Rock Brown. 
So she on social media telling now 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 these are her posts. So you see how his post was looking. Then you gotta see how her post was looking. She did this post three days before she deleted her husband. So see, I just feel like Jeremy should have um dipped in three days prior. Because she put this on her social media and uh, he most likely seen it too. Or I know somebody seen it and told him that's what she put up there. He shouldn't even went home. No more after that. No more. Because see, I'm trying to figure out why when some women get mad at the man, they, all, they automatically start saying... Um, Questioning the sexuality. Why is that? Why is that? You know what I'm saying? Why is it that when a woman gets mad, she automatically starts questioning his sexuality? Like, you know, he he buy, he he this, he he that, this, this that. You know, I don't understand it. I really don't understand it. I really don't understand it. Because, check this out, family. A woman, if you're going to call your man that, it don't make your man look bad. It make you look bad, first of all. Point blank, period. It don't make him look bad. It make you look bad. And people say, what you mean by it make the woman look bad? Yeah, it does. Because when a woman call their man that, they call their man gay, as an insult. See, that's supposed to be an insult. Calling a man that you know is not that. But to call him that, that's supposed to hit him real hard. That's supposed to really insult him. But actually, calling a man gay is not insulting. Gay is not an insulting word. So why are we doing that? It's not. You know, that's not an insulting word. But they know most men will get upset about being called that. But it don't make the man look bad. See, this is 2023. I'm going to tell y'all what's going on out here in these streets. And I'm going to tell you, the majority of the women that call men that it don't make their man look bad. It make them look bad. And because if you're going to call him that, what? What's really sad is if you saying that he's gay and you knowing that you disapprove of him being gay, but you still letting him knock your poo nanny in the, sh in the sh sheets real hard. And then you get up and cook breakfast for him after he knock you off real good. But you say he's gay. So who the fool? If you say you disapprove of it. See, we starting to side out of women because we need to quit the women saying, we need to stop them from saying that the man is gay when you know he's not. You doing it for an insult, but really, we don't start questioning the woman. Well, if you know that, why you still with him? So either you approve of it or you lying on him. Mm-hmm. And most likely you're lying on him. You lying on. You just want to try to ruin his reputation out here. This girl put this clean up there on social media where everybody can see it. How trifling. Calling him that word because she mad at him. See, that's what women do when they get mad at him. First word they call a man. Okay. So what if he is? It don't matter. My question is you. If you approve, disapprove of it so bad, you disapprove of it so much, why are you still in that house with that man? So, see, that's when we side out your ass. Not him. Now, if you out of the relationship and you say that, you still got to have some evidence. But if you outside of the relationship and you say that, okay, that's a different story. You know what I'm saying? But being in that home and saying that, we got to side out you. So stop using that word as an insulting word because it's not an insulting word. We starting to side out your ass for saying it. You know, like your girlfriend or something come over to the house and then you and your man over there having a little disagreement. First thing you holler with your 
Yeah, yes, and all that stuff. Well, hey, we ain't gonna look at him funny. We're gonna look at you like, really? So you know he is and you still here? So you approve of it? I mean, because you saying you disapprove of it, but at the same time, you still here cooking lunch, breakfast, and dinner, and all that, and letting him knock you off in the sheets. But then you're going to tell everybody else that he another kind of way. So we got to side eye you. You got to be lying, right? Or you approve of it. Because if you disapprove of it so much, you wouldn't even be here. Point blank period. But then them will be the first woman to run down there to the hair salon, getting their gay friend to lay their hair. Now, you're going to talk about them, but then you're going to ask them to do your hair. We got to do better. We really do. And my heart goes out to those kids. It really do. It goes out to those kids. Those kids got a long road ahead of them, especially the one that was sitting there crying. But anyway, I wanted to just talk about that. Stop calling me in that. And you know they not that for real. That don't make no sense, that girl put that all over social media three days ago, three days before the pow pow happened, before she deleted him. See, he should as soon as he got word that she put this on her social media, he should have never came back home. He should have never came back home, and the next time he see the kids will be in the courtroom, him trying to get custody. Mm-hmm. That's how that should happen. Because he the one working. She ain't working. From, from the word out here on the street. I told you, I'm down here on the Gulf Coast. Word out on the street is she was a stay-at-home mom. She wasn't even working. So how she got a nerve to complain? You ain't even working and you complaining about cooking and cleaning and all that. That's your job. Anyway. Then she put that on the social media. Three days before she deleted him. National sales and lease manager. See, Jeremy must have been a national sales and lease manager. She said he screws his employees. Come on now. Why are you putting all that stuff up about that man? He shouldn't have even went back to that house. That was red flags all over the place. You know? Then she's showing... Her ring that he bought, boy, he ain't no good man, right? But he upgraded. He upgraded her ring. See, my husband got me an upgrade for my anniversary press. So he upgrades her. But then she downgrade, downgrade him in the grave. Man, I tell you. Happy anniversary to my lover, my best friend, and my wonderful, amazing husband. So, see, this is when he do things for. You know, when he buying her stuff, seem like, you know. Then she started writing, you have to love all of me, not half of me. See, she throwing out signs. And she reposting all these negative things, family. All these negative things. The man who is truly sorry will change his behavior. The man, the man who misses you will make an effort and always show up. You know, it's just she was she was showing all kind of signs. And then this right here, she says, I'm healing, not healed. So, yes, I still spaz out when I feel played. So she spares out. See, that's another thing. See, they probably use all these uh, posts in court, too. His lawyers will probably use all of this. She said she spares out when she want to, when she feel like she being played. You know? You be, people need to be careful what they put on social media because they will use it on your ass in a courtroom. I can tell y'all that right now. You know what I'm saying? She said, I could be mean as F, sweet as candy, cold as winter, evil as hell. Come on now. Jeremy should have been left that house, honey. That was something he gave her for uh, Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. He gave her that for Valentine's Day. And she put, put that up there. Uh, that's, that's the article 
that I already done read to y'all and everything like that, that she was arrested, you know, and she did it live on Facebook. Those are other alias. She goes by Hampton, and she goes by Brown. She goes by another one, too. She goes by Porter. She goes by Porter. She goes by Hampton. She go. Y'all already know how the knowledge family do. I get you. I find you. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to deleting people and stuff like that. Innocent people like this. Yeah, but see, I ain't have to dig no more on her. Our team didn't have to dig no more on her because she already in jail. Okay? So they already got her. And she, oh, Lord, I'm going to tell you, Mississippi, I wanted to show y'all that. Mississippi only have, family, two things that they do. Most, Missis most states divide the crime of deletion into first and second degree. Not Mississippi. However, Mississippi don't divide deletion like that. How they do it is only one. It's only deletion or capital deletion. You only got two. Ain't no first degree, second degree, third degree. Ain't none of that. You just got two options. And it's the deletion and the capital deletion. And that's what it says here. And, you know, the capital deletion, it really involves like if you uh, delete a police officer, a city official, state official, stuff, stuff like that, or, or do some type of bombing or something like that. Other than that, you go right up under the deletion um, status, okay? And that, that status there, I'm going to tell you, that's how I'd say deleting occurs upon being, this is what I think her court-appointed lawyer or something like that might say, I don't think she's going to really be able to have enough to get a, a lawyer. She might do, but I'm just saying, this is what they mostly going to try to plead for. Say that she acted in a heat of a moment. Okay? And then that person will, it'll probably drop them down to that right there. Okay, I ain't saying those words because sometimes YouTube be stink about, you know, saying a lot of words. But anyway, she still, you will see right here, it don't matter if you delete somebody in Mississippi, it is a felony punishable by life in prison. So, see, they murder stars out. See, Mississippi, that's why I tell people, pay attention. Wherever you living at, pay attention to your laws because they are all different when it comes to different things because Mississippi don't have all that first degree, second degree. Uh-uh. You up under one thing, and that's deletion or either capital deletion. And deletion in Mississippi is most likely life in prison. Ain't no ands, ifs, but about it. And the capital deletion will be that death penalty. Okay? So, they ain't playing down in Mississippi, so she done. But, so that's, that's it, and that's them as the, you know, loving couple and things like that. But I just really hate to see that family. I really do. That That's so sad. And... Women, just keep your hands off men because let me tell you, a lot of men are out here being abused and I'm finna cl close out, but it's a lot of men out here that are being abused in the relationship. It's a lot of women out here that are abusing men. They really are. And you'll see right here, half of male victims, 49%, fail to tell anyone they are a victim of DV. And are two and a half less times likely to tell anyone than female victims. Okay? Female victims, would 19% of them will tell. You know? But uh, you see, 49% of the men, they won't tell. They just take it inside the home. And that's sad. Because they feel embarrassed or something like that. So they don't want to tell. You know. And 11% of male victims. And 2% of women. Have considered taking themselves. You know out. Because of this matter. Because they don't want to tell nobody. That they being DV'd inside the home. And that's sad. 
So, man, you need to speak up, leave, put some of these women on paper, vice versa. Men, uh, women, if you're going through that, you need to put, put them on paper and get out of that relationship. Please do, you know. But anyway, you'll see it says figures suggest that as many as one in three victims of DV are males. A lot of people don't even know that. Check that out again. One in three victims of DV are males. However, men are often reluctant to report, a, you know, that because they feel embarrassed. Fear they won't be believed. Or they scared of the partner that they living with that's going to take revenge out of them. You know, and that's sad. That is really sad. So let's just keep our hands off men, women, and, and, uh, and women. Keep your hands off the men. It's sad. It, it, it really is. It's a sad, sad case. And it's just so many people that y'all wouldn't understand how many men are going through this. It's a lot of men that's going through this that won't say a word. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of us see it out in the public. We know it. We know when the, the woman is more abusive to the man. We know that. And the thing is that when men do that to women, they have this label on their back for a lifetime throughout the community unless they move somewhere else. But they'll have a label on their back as being a woman be a beater or a woman, or, you know, whipping on women and stuff. People all over town, all over the state, uh -huh, girl, don't mess with him because, you know, he whip on women and stuff like that. But when a woman is known for doing that to a man, she don't have to wear that label all over town and all over the city and stuff about, hey, look here, man, uh, don't don't deal with that chick because she like to whip on men. See, they don't do it like that. Why? Why? It should be equal, equal. It really should. But I can tell y'all one thing. A lot of people don't understand and believe that. When a couple go out, especially if they go around friends and family, friends and family can automatically spot it real quick. And they can automatically detect when their loved one is with a DV person. They stick out like a sore thumb. They stick out like a stop sign. Yeah. Think about a family. When your family member come in the house, and if you ever know, or friends that came around you, and you felt like, that man is most likely DVing her. Or that woman is most likely DVing him. It's the signs all over them. Because all the family members and friends got to do is sit back and watch. We can hear it in their voice. We can hear how they talk to that person. We can hear how the other person is kind of drawled up and not themselves. They not talking much they looking at the other partner before they say something or either that partner speaking for them all the doggone time the other partner is speaking for the for their partner like somebody could be asking the woman something and the man speak i ain't talking to you i'm talking to her why she can't talk for herself or vice versa Somebody could be asking the man something and then the wife jumps up and starts speaking up and talking and taking over the conversation we ain't talking to you chick we talking to him. Why you got to jump in everything? So see, I'm going to tell you right now. Families and friends already spot that type of stuff a mile away. And that's when friends and family should go to that person and see if anything is going on. And if so, help them get out of that situation. Or see if the both of them can agree to some type of counseling. So the other one can get better and stop that behavior. And if they can't, it's time to jet. It's time to jet. So that's all I got to say about that family. I just want to say my heart goes out to those kids and the knowledge family is praying for those kids because uh, those children have a long, hard road ahead of them. And we want to give our condolences to Jeremy family, send out all prayers to his family. 
and I will stay on top of this case because, like I said, we down here on the Gulf Coast right there next to Mississippi. So we'll definitely be on this situation because it's a lot of local news that we get. It's a lot of news that we can get just by having our feet on the ground because we're so close to this area. So we will go into that. And um, my team automatically started talking about probably um, going to the trial when the trial starts and all that stuff. So give y'all some inside information on that. We just got a lot to handle on that. But anyway, uh, knowledge family, prayers go out to the family, go out to his children, these kids got a long road and it's no telling what their adult life going to be. I mean, their childhood probably be all messed up. They going to need a lot of love, a lot of love. So they don't turn into a wrong path and they don't lead down a terrible road of destruction. Because something like this will turn a child to be evil. After witnessing and seeing something like this. So our prayers go to that family hard. That's all I have to say about that. Because these kids lost two parents. In a matter of seconds. Pray for that family. That's all I got to say about that. Gain knowledge to prevent blockage. And we all know what that means. The more you know the harder it is for anybody to block y'all from your goals and success. Bye bye.